So hello, uh, this will be a unboxing, not unboxing, unbackpacking video. I'm going to empty my backpack. I've just been guiding for a couple of days with a client. Uh, kind of a typical request that show me for a few days and then I want to continue alone. And that's what I love doing to get people on their own feet and feel confident and happy to be on their own. So I just want to unpack now uh, my backpack and show what I carry with me um, what I did to my backpack, well, how do I modify some of my gear, uh, what I carry um, when I'm guiding here in the subarctic of so-called Eastern Finland. I say so-called Eastern Finland because it's only our species that calls it this way. So I will move this camera a bit down and maybe I start with what you can see. So I wear this Swedish army hat. It's really nice. Uh, this gives some protection from sun and mosquitoes, also just like flipping the corners down a bit. And I like to wear it whenever the sun is not in the face. I like to wear it this way around, get to see more. Um, so that's why I have it like this now also. Then um, I have the map here. Usually I give the map to the customer. So this is a 1 to 50,000 scale topographic map of Finland. And um, <laughs> maybe you can see a little bit do you see all these ditches these are all trenches that um, our ancestors have dug to to drain all the bogs so the so-called boglanders suomi the finnish word it should actually be i don't know ditch landers uh, more ditches than bogs anyhow so the map is usually i'd like to give it to the customer so that the customer gets a feeling for you know, what the distance on the map means, uh, how does it compare to the distances in, in the real world. I like 50,000 scale map because you cover a bigger area with one map. Uh, and the detail, in my opinion, is still sufficient to, to safely navigate. 25,000 is a lot nicer to navigate with, just for your information. Like one centimeter on a 25,000 scale map is like um, 250 meters. So on this map, one to 50,000, one centimeter is 500 meters. So it's not that detailed. Anyhow, um, the map is with the customer and I also want to every now and then be shown where we are because um, it's, it's a bad idea if the only person in the group where, know, who knows where we are is the person with the map. In case something happens to the person, then the others don't know where we are. So it's always good to share that information. So, okay, I continue with the unpacking. Um, I'll take off my bag. Um, and I don't know if there's enough space. The backpack is a Savotta Kevut Raya Vartia. So like a um, light border patrol backpack that I have modified. I don't know if you can see. I will take off first. Um, the the isolation mattress this is also Savotta um, also something I modified there is another video where you can see how I modified it I will use this mattress now see you can actually see the mod already now I have added this <laughs> zipper here so if I'm you know I don't know lazy hasty whatever then I can just roll up the sleeping bag in the mattress um, I made longer straps here it's very convenient uh, if you sometimes want to have more space in the backpack uh, to not have to. Um... Oh, then here is a fishing rod. Um, in Finland, we have this everyone's right, so everyone can fish with a normal uh, fishing rod. Um, and usually, I find so I don't bother about carrying bait. I usually find something. You know, either some water insects under some stones, or it could be, um, you know, some grubs and bugs that live in beetles or under the bark. Um, and yeah, it's it's quite quite a nice, like guaranteed fish supply. So usually I get a frying pan filled with it. So I open the mattress, so I can do the unpacking on here. Okay, so under the backpack you see. My shoes, I will leave those on now. These are some Innovate barefoot running shoes. 
I usually do everything with barefoot anyway. So all the walking I do barefoot. These are just backup shoes in case uh, we come to some, I don't know, like not so pleasant to walk area, um, like some gravel with big nasty rocks or I need to, I don't know, carry the customer's backpack on top of my backpack or I don't know, somehow have the customer or something. So I carry shoes, but I usually don't use them. Um, need to adjust the camera a little bit. So I hope you can see. Um, yeah, so what I added to this backpack, I changed all the buckles. They were 20 millimeters. I changed them, everything, the straps to 25 millimeter. Um, also, oh, this is frying pan. Uh, Murica frying pan. Um, I have a little screw here to attach the handle. The always handle will always be whittled. And then there is a little here. This you see the handle of a spatula, metal spatula. And yeah, very nice frying pan. I've been eating very many meals with it. Okay, so here under the lid is a forest jacket. Um, just some. Nothing special, Fjord Raven jacket, um, some gloves here in the chest pouch I carry, in a very waxed cotton pouch I carry some tinder, usually birch bark, um, some pieces of uh, pine resin, um, usually there might be yeah, some sap wood, so that's kind of the tinder pouch. Um, that I kind of continue to fill when I find Tinder on the way. Um, what else is in here? Mosquito head net. Oh, name of my operation, Nordic by nature. That's how I also feel. Oh, here I modified some to attach, um, I don't know, for example, the compass or something. Uh, then there is uh, this kind of tube scarf, like a buff, and this is not what it says, this is like my self-made salva like this is uh pitch and like tar um spruce pitch and uh resin like and then some hemp oil beeswax uh actually some birch tar also so and i add as i find so when i find some stuff i just add it there if i find some nice clean pitch i put it in there and next time i'm in the sauna i um I melt it in and mix it in so yeah and then there's obviously the other glove in here and usually kind of a bit of trail mix for the day like when I can just snack sometimes okay was there anything else I think that was it from this jacket I put this jacket everything I unpack I put over there um, and yeah, so we continue. Oh, have I not shown yet what I'm having on my belt in my vest? So here is my spoon with a safety pin. Safety pin is useful for getting splinters out. Um, and so to get splinters out and to, you know, it, it's handy every now and then, like also to poke eggs before you boil them or something. Um, then I have a pen and paper and usually the phone in this pocket then i carry this is uh usually i carry a shirt at this season this is like um middle of september so we can have like quite chilly nights but i'm getting by with this quite nicely so just one long sleeve shirt um recent edition again a wristwatch this is like a solar powered i usually do not like to buy new things and also this one i found on the flea market most of the stuff you find here is either military surplus or bought secondhand or made by myself. Um, because, you know, when you're into, I don't know, wilderness guiding, bushcraft, survival, uh, you very easily go to the place of understanding that high level sustainability and deep nature connection are, you know, kind of the same thing in a way. And that means that um, if I can avoid buying something new, it's good for us nature. So... That's why most of the stuff you see is either surplus or secondhand or self-made. Um, also self-made is this sarong. I like wearing sarongs, uh, kind of an Asian leg dress popular with all genders. 
um, extremely versatile piece of clothing very nice I don't mind the mosquitoes on the legs like also now you see one there it's just like you know part of the summer deal um, and then I have this kind of waist bag waist pouch um, this is uh, Finnish army stainless steel water bottle 0.6 liters I modified it a bit added molly here um, move this down a bit again so you can see me having a look in here this is like a Olympus camera um, waterproof very very nice macro um, I really like the quality of the pictures compared to just phone pictures um, and that also gives somehow a freedom to clients to you know having to have their phone with them so they can use it or I share pictures with them um, small first aid kit here this um, includes some some medicine also a little bag this is basically also everyday carry stuff that I use in the city this pouch uh, a bag for you know find some mushrooms plant something my wallet um, headlamp um, yeah the petzl bindi I, I really like it it's very small it has a low lumen setting most of the time I use the low lumen on the red light setting and in case needed there's also another one um, on winter tours uh, I carry as a backup actually another bindi um, then there is um, how do you call it handkerchief and this is nice for taking pictures of tracks so you get a scale so you can lay this next to the track that you want to um, you know document like footprints and you get a scale and you photograph from the top centimeters obviously um, yeah what else is in here um, this can go back in yeah like this is as, as I said I don't want to unpack now all the first aid stuff but um, some stuff for for wounds um, here's some writing block and pencil and uh, yeah that's basically it from here so uh, then I have another belt I'm taking this off too here I carry um, like just a small buko uh, really short blade but really what I use for most of the work um, then I have because there might be sometimes repairs or so especially when you travel with cars or bicycles um, so a multi-tool um, Swiss tool by Victorinox I found this to be much more reliable than the um, than the Leatherman that I had before a couple of times my Kuxa wooden cup uh, very convenient you know you can just dip it into the lake or the streams to drink out of it um, good for your brews and coffees and teas whatever and yeah those kuksas like um, they should either be given to you as a gift or they should be self-made um, in this pouch here I have a um, little oppie nail that I modified with the uh, chainsaw file and pocket rope three meters of paracord and the fire steel um, this is maybe a nice thing this is uh, made by Kupilka but I taped some painters tape around here to make sure not to scratch in this area and to just actually use it more like a pencil using it from the from the tip okay so let's go into the main backpack and the side pouches um, so modifications that I did to this pack I swapped all the straps to 25 millimeter webbing and uh, there are basically these G hooks, metal G hooks everywhere. Also made this strap longer and added Molly to the side. Um, yeah, and as you can see, for adding Molly, I just open the whole backpack and add the Molly in there. So I want to do it proper. Um, this pouch is some, you know, kind of food stuff, let's say. Um, water filter unit a sawyer water filter folding bucket folding bucket 10 liters or 8 liters it's like this is like such a good thing um, because like you can use it to collect mushrooms during the day 
and it allows you to also camp further away from the water that kind of it helps you resist the temptation to camp right by the water where there's more mosquitoes where it's usually cooler a bit more moist and also like there's a risk that you might contaminate water sources with your you know camp routines so this allows you to camp further away hang it up on a tree have some nice water in there from where you can filter um, something i usually don't use i carry it when i have customers toilet paper with hand disinfectant um, i usually just use water and left hand so a um, bit more paracord usually don't use it for something anything just in case some customer forgets something or also helpful for water crossings uh, for shuttling backpacks over and so on um, then i have a big tarp of painters type and um, and a rescue blanket, space blanket. So this is basically uh, everything needed for a super shelter together with this paracord. So the Mors Kohansky super shelter, rest, he, may he rest in peace, Mr. Mors Kohansky. Um, some strap um, helpful for, you know, pulling firewood out of the, out of the forest somewhere to campsite or like it's like a webbing strap. Um, I think it's maybe two meter loop and the carabiner. Um, next thing in here is my pot, pot and eating. Like there's some bonus here, like the bar of chocolate I usually like to leave untouched. Um, back up also like a muesli bar, then a um, little bottle of olive oil some salt and this is uh, alcohol and the alcohol burner like this uh, I can show it to you so this is the uh, ethanol how you call it and this is a self-made alcohol stove made out of uh, this kind of energy drinks Red Bull stuff um, okay this is the pot and I just throw this loosely in there. Then Savota big bad stove, like a wood stove. I shall mention that these wood stoves, according to the Finnish, everyone's right. Um, you must use fireplaces to make open flame fire. So other places you can use the stove. Uh, hence I have this alcohol burner. Um, this one here, the wood burning stove, you can basically only use at fireplaces, which is really unfortunate because you, know, you can make extremely safe fires with these very efficient, a lot more sustainable uh, than carrying fuels with you and, and kind of expensive stoves at times. So um, I like to use these wood stoves and it's really, really fast. You just sit down and gather the stuff that is laying on the ground around you and it's very fast. The heat is focused. Um, the stove fits really nicely on there. It's like just a normal kind of box, box, um, box shaped hobo stove. Um, let's go to the other pouch here. So here on this side is kind of tools and stuff. So a uh, bigger first aid kit, also more trauma stuff there, big bleeders, uh, like this, uh, not, how do you call it, this tourniquet uh, that is kind of an elastic, a bit like a bicycle inner tube. Um, gloves, also somehow thicker gloves, like uh, thick enough that you can still, or thin enough that you can still feel pulse but also th so thick that you can use them again and wash them. So if you have like multiple patients or a longer trip or so. Um, this little bit of a ditty bag pouch um, where there's like spare, uh, I found some honey here, some, some more string, uh, pen and uh, another pen and a spare memory card. And then also I carry in here some allergy medicine and um, the field guide wilderness medical associates field guide highly recommend making these courses i always look forward to the fresh how do you call it refresher for the wilderness first responder a power bank uh, for charging the phone usually the phone is on flight mode in the pocket 
Nice tip, by the way, when you go with a group to the woods, just make sure everybody unlock their phones and keep the lock off because in case something happens, everyone can access your phone. Maybe their phone don't have access to, to um, emergency services or no battery or something and your phone does. Um, people can find your next of kin in your phone. So quite useful. Um, so then we have the um, poop scoop. How do you call it? Not like, um, you know, for, for digging cat holes. Um, also usually something I only carry with groups. Usually I personally use a digging stick or, or some stone or so to, to, to dig the hole for the pooping. Uh, then some kind of slightly more serious wood tools like the Bach or Laplander. So like this is stuff I usually only use in camp for making firewood, especially bigger fires, Bach or Laplander saw and Sisi Boko, uh, the shorter version 2005. Um, under here I added some diamond, diamond, sticky diamond sharpener and uh, added this uh, fire steel here. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what else do we have uh, here? A little bit of a pouch with some, I don't know, general repair stuff, rivets, thread and needle, wire, uh, tape, um, stainless steel nails. What else we have here? Uh, spare, co well, compass. This I use for the hitchhiking signs. Often I go with the customers and hitchhike back or something. A magnifying glass, for some reason more paracord, uh, condoms, some, some dice games, a uh, candle, um, yeah, variety of things. So, and then here is a uh, charging cable, including possibility to charge on the way somewhere in, I don't know, petrol stations or buses or when hitchhiking in cars. Up here in the lid pocket, unfortunately, dear Sabota, this, why is this not a 3D lid and why is it not available to, you know, change in the height? The new M version has the height adjustable, but there's no lid pouch there anymore. Uh, here it says C to Summit pocket shower, but it's not what it is, so I have like Toothbrush, uh, hygiene, tooth, uh, how do you call it, toothpaste tablets, uh, some uh, dental floss, um, soap, razor blade, uh, shaving blade, I mean, a comb. Um, yeah, so that's the hygiene. Let's go into this one here. I had already opened it before with the, um, where the jacket was in. So, this is the food pouch. This is now pretty much empty. Usually I like to carry buckwheat, muesli mixes, um, nut mixes, something that, especially this time of the season, I, of the year, I just supplement with like fish, mushrooms, berries, um, and, and just wild edibles that I can find. Then it's a rain poncho. This one is Dutch army. It's pretty big and heavy, but it's also pretty big <laughs> so and robust. So um, I kind of like it um, and it also goes over the backpack. So I'm quite okay with this and it's a good, good also camouflage. Breaks up your shape really nicely if you're sitting somewhere observing for longer. Oh, the binoculars. I have them in the yurt. I arrived already. So usually I have the binoculars around my neck. They're not here. Uh, there are some Steiner um, military surplus also. So here is um, spare clothing. This is usually the hitchhiking shirt, some nicer shirt, towel, socks in case needed. Usually I don't use need them in the in this not winter season. Um, I like when I hitchhike back out, I like to really have a swim before hitchhiking and, um, and change to the nice shirt, not to smell of fire because I might be the first hitchhiker of someone, so don't want to be the last. Um, then here is my tarp. Um, it's a British Army Basha with strings attached, just stuffed in. Also the strings not, you know, wrapped nicely, just everything stuffed in. Uh, it really deploys quite easily. Uh, no ever any knots or, or tangles in there. Uh, I don't carry any pegs. I hardly ever need pegs. I hardly ever need to make pegs. If I need to make pegs, you know, it's just like sharpen a stick and that's it. But usually I just um, 
you know, connect to trees or roots. So it's really easy to just feed line, you know, put your hands in the ground and push a line under a bundle of roots or some thicker roots and then just pull it through. Very convenient. You can just basically anchor wherever. I really like the tarp sleeping bag isolation mattress setup. Uh, mosquito net because especially like alone you will always find a place where it's nice and soft and straight and warm and dry um, so it's always really good sleeping and I like that you know you can dry stuff under the top you have good ventilation also when you you know you wake up and you haven't been moving for like many hours the other animals around you they might be just you know, having grown used to you somehow and you're not making a racket, you're not opening loud zippers, you can just wake up and you can see everything. So it's like really nice this waking up and then like staying in bed and observing and listening and it's like almost the sweetest moment of the day. Um, yeah, then I have like the uh, kind of, uh, how do you call it, Mitznefets, this, uh, you know, like a... Uh, to out, break out outline when doing some nature observation or observing other animals and some camel scarf that I modified a bit so you can wear it around your head and tie it around your body and uh, like um, you know camouflage making a blind where behind you can sit or add some green vegetation to it so uh, I use this also for games with groups, like, you know, hiding group members and so on. Um, so then we have also the fishing rod is useful for some group exercises. Like many of these things here have multiple purposes. Uh, this is a Dutch army pop-up mosquito net, like kind of a dome. It's really, really, I love this thing. Um, it's like, you know, so easy to set up you don't need to attach it to anywhere it's just freestanding and it's good protection you know the net is nice away from your from your ears you don't have this buzzing right on your ears of the mosquitoes so it gives you a bit more space um and then we're coming to the end so we have here um now slightly compressed this is i think dutch army something like the carinthia defense one Dutch army version of this together with the um, with the cotton liner this sleeping bag inlet yeah so there you have it that's um, that's my my kind of guiding setup uh, this season this time of the year um, and yeah I also uh, juggle sometimes I use bigger backpacks um, sometimes I you know go really ultra lightweight depending a little bit on the demands of the customers this is actually not a heavy pack now it's it's you know carries very nicely quite easily good to carry i like it um quite compact so hmm what else is there yeah a lot of the stuff i i mean like for example the toilet paper is like you know stuff that i don't really really need and there's like other stuff that one usually wouldn't need at the same time uh usually clients that i'm guiding their comfort zone might not be where mine is uh, or they don't know where the edge of their comfort zone is and so i want to kind of pick them up where they are if you can say so and make a kind of a smooth transition from you know, like, yeah, have toilet paper, yeah, have, like, I don't know, this little bit of extra and this little bit of extra. Maybe give them matches uh, instead of fire steels, um, because also learning to use matches without them breaking or going off, even in windy or wet conditions, it's a useful skill. So, um, and, yeah, not much to it. Um, and I do guiding... Uh, here in Eastern Finland, also in other areas of Finland, anything from two hours to two weeks, um, all seasons. I like to go with small groups. I love this one-to-one, -one, uh, just one customer and me. I love this very much. It's a much deeper experience for everyone involved. Um, when there's bigger groups, I might uh, take my son with me or some um, some friend guides to to, I don't know, like be able to split the group or... I don't 
have have more kind of a better guide per per client ratio yeah i think that was it if you have any questions i think i might do other unpacking videos maybe some winter tours or so uh, now i'm putting everything up for airing and drying um some stuff needs to be washed obviously and yeah and i i don't know maybe if i've mentioned the barefoot is like really good it's so silent so good grip uh such a good connection good feel you you know get so much information through the ground through touching the ground very grounding also so uh, i highly recommend when it's warm enough not to use having to use gloves to also go barefoot um lighten the load yeah it's like really nice to go with a small light pack um not carrying too much nonsense stuff okay that was uh, it for me i wish you a very good time um thank you for subscribing to this channel thank you for watching this video and um, have a good time. See you. Hey, dog.